Hello and welcome in to a Hoosier Network exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with the Indiana baseball head coach Jeff Mercer. I'm pleased to be joined by him today and he's taking some time out of his very busy schedule to talk to us this morning. So coach, how are you doing today? I'm wonderful. It's a great day and I enjoy the opportunity. I appreciate it. Uh, this is your fifth year in Bloomington, an mm -hmm. eight seed in the Big Ten tournament last year. Uh, 2019 Big Ten champions. Mm -hmm. You guys also coach of the year and that's so congratulations. Thank you. Um, Kind of just a general question to get things started here. Where do you assess how you guys have progressed through the fall, through the winter, mm -hmm. coming off of that season last year? I, I'm really pleased, and, and that's not just a talking point to say. You know, I, I start to look at, you know, where we need to be in the program as far as the, the recruiting aspect, where we need to be as far as beginning to really shape for the for the the the, the short term, but also for the long term. And, from a talent standpoint, we're very, very talented. We're, we're, we're where we need to be at, both as a position player group and as a pitching group from a, from an experience standpoint, mm -hmm. where we need to be at. We put a lot of a lot of young guys last year, and those guys grew up a ton. We were able to use the, the transfer portal to bring in some a little bit of experience and some really talented guys. So, from the standpoint of the program and the health of it, I feel really good. From a growth standpoint, more of a, from a micro level, I'm really, really pleased. We we're able to change a few things. To I think help take some of the uh, youth out of the uh, uh, of the team, where mm -hmm. we can put our hands on the team a little bit more, holding the run game a little bit differently, just kind of installing a different system with that. I think will help a ton. Um, a little bit more pitch variety of of, of um, you know cutters and sinkers and changeups, just changing a little bit of the profile, which is always kind of a, a work in progress as you as the game changes. The, right. the game um, is constantly evolving. You have to evolve with it. We ought to make a few a few adjustments with the offensive guys, um, with with just a veteran group, but also adding some really talented pieces. So we made a few adjustments in some of the training regiments. You know, we weren't as good last year on sinkers and changeups offensively. I'd like to be better with those profiles. Um, so from a from a growth standpoint uh, of the team throughout this year, I've, I've been really really pleased. It's a it's a really talented group physically, but it's also a, a really mature and a very serious group and which fits my personality. So uh, that, that part has, has gone over really well. So I, I, I feel really good. And you mentioned the kind of the growth that you guys have almost had to incur. Mm -hmm. uh, I read an article that talked about, from last year that talked about teaching was your favorite thing to do on the baseball yeah. field. Yeah. You enjoy the recruiting process. Obviously yeah. you enjoy the success that comes with it. Yeah. But the development is something yeah. that you really strive for. And yeah. you guys have had 19 players drafted since you've been here. It's the yeah. most in the conference. Yeah. What is it about that process that really, you know, makes it the most enjoyable? Yeah, uh, you know, I was talking to Coach Rutherford the other day, and, and we were kind of talking about you know, when my transition from when I, I I recruited Zach, he was one of the first guys I recruited, and then when I coached him at Wright State, and then transitioned him coming to Indiana coaching, we were just kind of talking about mastering a process, mm -hmm. and I think the challenge of being able to replicate a process as a teacher, as a coach, is the challenge. And my, my parents were both teachers, both educators. My wife's a teacher. My, my aunts and uncles, everybody's in education. And so I grew up in that. And, and so you hear so much growing up about lesson plans. And then my dad was in business. And so you hear a lot about business models and mm -hmm. planning. And I, I've just always enjoyed the idea of if you can replicate a process over and over, then you can ensure success. And, and as you go through that, you, you make mistakes. You know, I've, I've taught things in hitting that I look back and I'm like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I did that. But it was all in an effort to be able to replicate the process that we could then bring in players and expedite that much more quickly. So can we do in, can we do in six months what would normally take two or three years? And really in the last year and a half to two years, we've really kind of figured that part out. Um, and, and so I think the challenge of finding that is very exciting for a coach because once you find it, then you know what you can accomplish year in and year out. Mm -hmm. And we were so young. I, you know, I was, I was 31 when I was named the head coach at Indiana. And so you know, we had a lot of success at Wright State. Um, but it's still, you're still in your journey to find that and, and, and really put your stamp on it. And I think the other thing we have as coaches is we have a responsibility to be a good steward to young men's careers. And, and so often we, be, we become enthralled and infatuated with the recruiting process. And it's so important. And mm -hmm. we're great at recruiting and I love recruiting. Um, but the reality is once a player's on campus, that's when your real responsibility begins. And your responsibility as a coach is to the player personally mm -hmm. and 
holistically and all of the, the nurturing that's required to help a young man grow. Um, but then the responsibility you have to his career. And, and they come because they want to play at a high level. They, they're coming to Indiana because they want to get their education, but they want to play uh, at a high level in college. They want to play for championships. They want to play in the postseason. And they want to try to play Major League Baseball. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to try to play against the best players in the entire world at the highest level, then our process has to be uh, excellent. It has to be the best. and has to help them to grow really quickly. And so the challenge of being able to provide that one for the program, but most importantly, for a kid's career, <clears throat> I think is your most important obligation as a coach and, and the challenge of figuring it out. It has been a lot of fun. I feel really good about where we've kind of managed to, to be at now, not through with, not without trial and error, mm -hmm. uh, but, but that's the only way. You have to have the courage to make a mistake to, to then be able to grow through it. And these guys get thrown into the fire instantly. You guys, yeah. with the, just talking about your schedule, mm -hmm. you guys start this year at Auburn, yeah. then at Texas, then you're in a really competitive invitational down in Carolina. Yeah. It's kind of been a theme since you've been here that you yeah. guys are gonna play the best competition right yeah. away. Why yeah. is that? Well, I think any time that you, you, you set a goal for yourself to be able to play at, at the highest level. So if, you, if you're at Indiana and you want to try to compete for a national championship, to do that, you have to go play against teams that compete for a national championship. To right. do otherwise would, would be to, to be dishonest with what your goals are. And there's a process to get to anything, mm -hmm. right? If, if you become the master of processes, you become the master of your domain. And so for us to be able to play at that level, the best way for us to be the, the best team that we can be at the end of the season is to immediately see where we are mm -hmm. and see where we, where we are deficient at and where we're good at and then make the necessary adjustments so we have a very tight feedback loop. You get in, you find out where you're good, where you're bad at, you get immediate feedback, you tighten the loop and you get better and you grow. And, and through that, you can legitimately improve throughout the course of the season. You, can all, you, can, you have to be careful not to over schedule which I've done at times where you have to give guys a little bit of a breather at times. Um, but I think it's best to see where you stand immediately and then be able to go out and, and grow through their process. Again, if, you're, if your goal is to be the best you can be in the last month, which is what I always tell kids, let's be the best team that we can be in the last month of the season because that's when all the fun stuff happens. Right. And everything up until then is just a process and a learning opportunity and growth. So as a coach, you have a responsibility to put those challenges in front of them to help them grow through. Yes, it would be easier on my on my heart and I would have more hair in my head if we didn't schedule like that and we didn't do those things and we and we you know we we won a bunch of games early, but it wouldn't be the best thing for the kids. And the reality is this team is talented enough to go play with anybody. They're talented enough. Like we won't go on the field and be out talented anywhere in the country. And so if we win or we lose, it would be a matter of were we emotionally stable, were we fundamental, did we make the right choices? Could we compete? Uh, long enough and tough enough and hard enough and, and that would be the difference maker for us now is the team is good enough to play with anybody so that's the exciting part I think if you look back in that 20 that 2021 season where we were in first place until the last couple of weeks of the season you know not having a non-conference schedule really hurt that team mm -hmm. where you don't we, we didn't experience failure until the last three two or three weeks and so, you know, if there was ever a chance that, that I would change the philosophy, that experience drove it home even more, is you, you have to experience challenge up front to be able to be the best team you can be at the end. The first time you experience failure can't be in the last three or four weeks of the season. And, uh, and, and so we've always scheduled tough and we will. And you've mentioned that process and how it's had to replicate itself kind of because you've needed it to. You mm -hmm. guys last year struggled on the mound a little bit yeah. and that's partially because you had to replace nearly your entire starting rotation yeah. this year it's yeah. shaping up to possibly do be an all new rotation again this year yeah we heard from josh pine from philip glasser last week yeah. that the pitchers have been a lot tougher to yeah. hit this yeah. this fall and this winter versus yeah. last year how do you see the the mound improvement coming along yeah i think it's probably our our biggest area of growth uh, we, we do return a lot of position players, and they've gotten better. But, you know, I look at the, the draft is obviously a huge uh, uh, success point. Like, I'm very proud of that. You also, it also can be kind of, you, you can be a victim of your own success a little bit when you're losing eight, nine, ten guys, arms to the draft in, in succession in short order. So, again, you have to learn to how, as a coach, you have to learn how to 
to to do it faster. You have to learn how to develop faster. You, mm -hmm. you just can't rely on hey through the through time and age that you know just they'll they'll get there because they're not getting guys in that third and fourth year. They're gone. They're in professional baseball. So I think that is has required us to learn <clears throat> and evolve as coaches. And I think that that last year's experiences will help to shape this year's group, their toughness, their mentality. So a lot of a lot of the pitching staff struggles last year really were, were from an emotional standpoint, having not experienced it before. And that's a different it's a different world. You know, as a hitter, if you start if you start a game or whatever, and you, you go 0 for four with four strikeouts, your team can still win the game. Mm -hmm. If you go on the mound and you walk the first four guys of the game, the game's over and you lose. So that's a really different experience. Position guys have a you can hide. Right? I can make an error and we still win. You know, there's a little bit there's a little bit more of a team aspect to position player. From a pitching standpoint, you're on an island, you're on the mound, and in the first time you experience kind of the fray, that's hard. Mm -hmm. And so, no, I didn't think that we would struggle on the mound last year like we did because we were very talented. The thing that was an unknown was just a complete lack of experience because the year before all those guys that pitched got drafted and so it's a whole new group. And so this year with the group, I, th I think that our understanding of that and then being able to really focus on the, the, the aptitude, the, the emotional maturity, um, the, the, the really the minutia of, of you practice holding runners, but is it the most important thing that you do for a month? Right? Mm -hmm. There's a difference in we practice it, we do it. Is it the most important thing that we do for a month? I think when, when you make it a priority, you're obviously you're developing emotional maturity in the aspects of the game that, 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 that can take your focus away from going competing and throwing a pitch. So I think our investment into those peripheral things has really helped. And the kids are really good kids. They're, they're awesome kids. They're here for the right reasons. They're very talented. Um, and I think we had to do a better job of just of, of preparing them for success, and I believe we've done that. And then the 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 multifacetedness of the staff, I, I really like the ability to throw multiple pitches in any count. I think is is critically important. And then you're starting to see some of those early recruiting classes that you know were two and three and four years ago that were were recruiting really hard behind the scenes and, and nobody really knows about yet. Those guys are starting to to get on campus now. Um, and so you have some really, really talented young arms that I, that I think are going to make their mark right away. And, and so that part is exciting as well. And that makes a difference, right? Re right. Recruiting matters. The physical ability matters. Uh, the, the ability to step on the field right away and compete at a high level is incredibly important. And I think we have all those ingredients. And you mentioned that there won't be another team as talented as you out on the diamond this year. But how, part of that when it translates to success comes yeah. with the maturity yeah. and you just mentioned yeah. that comes with the offense this year yeah. you guys could score with anybody yeah. last year yeah. how do you guys take the next step <clears throat> when you look back on that and see hey we were really productive last year yeah. what's the next step for that evolution yeah i don't know if we'll be more talented but we won't be out talented right, right. we won't be out class um, but i would say that from an offensive standpoint the, the big thing that i noticed last year we, we changed some of our drill work and we changed our focal point to make sure that we were um, we could cover the top of the zone down, right? Mm -hmm. The two years ago in 19, when we led the country in homers for the, almost 99% of the season. Um, we struggled with the, with the elevated pitch, fastballs up, we swung and missed. Uh, we hammered pitches down. You know, I wanted to, we wanted to change the heat map essentially. And last year with that new group, we knew that with it being an entirely new group, no one would know any difference if we changed our, our kind of our training environment. So mm -hmm. we changed it whole kind of wholesale to make that heat map look different. Um, the thing that I noticed with it kind of at the end of the season, kind of looking back was, oh shoot, we weren't <laughs> as good. The show goes on. <laughs> we weren't as good. Uh, we weren't as good with sinkers and change-ups, pitches that uh, looked like fastballs that, that, that worked down in the zone. And mm -hmm. so we were on top of a lot of those pitches. And so we, we, I don't want, we didn't change our training or didn't change our regimen. What we changed was just exposing them more, using the spin ball um, to, to have more pitch variety like that. Um, uh, having one of the legs on the, on the hack attack be shortened and really working sinkers, like um, more they, like the approach angle of the pitch and making sure that we're, we're exposing them visually to those pitches, I think w will be a, a, really, a really important piece to that. I think having more depth is critically important to the mm -hmm. offense. So that you sometimes, if you, if you have a lefty who's just struggling with a lefty, you, you got to get him out. Well, we didn't always have the depth to be able to do that last year. 
Um, and so we got to put guys in better positions. Offensive, I think, will really help. More athletic. And we got to stay healthy. We got to have more depth. We can get some guys that um, we need to be able to steal more bases and go first to third and in, in, in second to home. But it's it, it's incumbent upon guys to be healthy to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And so we've added some really athletic guys, but we've also added depth so we can get guys in and out. So I think the variety of those couple of things that we'll be better with on sinkers and change ups, we're going to have to be. Because if I was pitching to us, that's what I would, you'd have to throw to us. Because if you throw at 93 up and over the middle, we're going to hammer it. Um, and then we're going we're gonna to be able to run the bases better, steal more bags, first to third, second to home, and then try to keep guys healthy by getting guys in and out. And play matchups. We put, if you're always putting the pitcher at a disadvantage statistically over the, over the course of 60, 65 games, you, you'll, you'll find more success that way. I want to talk about a few players individually here. Um, there was the really good freshman group from last year of Pine, Matheson, Tibbetts, mm -hmm. all those guys, they come back mm -hmm. and now, like you just mentioned, you guys bring in some really good depth with, Di mm -hmm. with Tyler Cerny, guys like Devin Taylor. Yeah. What is it about, I guess, that, that youth that you've mm -hmm. seen that is going to allow them to propel themselves forward? Well, there, there, is a, there is something to be said for a high school player that played at a high level. Mm -hmm. Played for really good teams, played on national events, went to national showcases. There's something to be said for being exposed to the best competition at a young age. And, and, and you know, I'm all for taking the guy, you know, uncovering the rocks and shaking the trees. And, you know, you know, you know Brock Tibbetts is a perfect example, great quarterback. You know, wasn't necessarily a super high-profile recruit early in his career during COVID, and um, and ended up being a really tough kid and a wonderful player. Mm. Um, but those guys have played at the highest level. Devin Taylor played for the, you know, the Midland Redskins for for years. I mean, he's 16 years old playing against 18-year-old grown men. And Tyler Cerny has played against the best players in the country. Played for the Bulls, traveled the, the globe playing. Um, A.J. Shepard played for the Canes Nationals team, the, essentially the, the top high school team in the country. He's a starting catcher for, for two or three years. So these guys have experienced it. They've lived it. The stage is not too big. They're really tough kids. And, and you, what, what you sell as a coach in the recruiting process, those personalities are attracted to that. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're selling, if you're selling uh, a work and development and education, and you're selling that level of investment. Realistically, you're going to you're going to attract guys that are like that, and I think that's what those guys do. They want to work, they want to improve, they want to get better, and then they've played at a really high level, and so they're able to step in, and they're not overwhelmed when they get here, uh, to the degree that most freshmen are. All freshmen are overwhelmed. The first six right. months is always hard, um, but they're able to, to adjust and apply the information. And right now, they're all they're all playing really well. Uh, last year it was Tyler Dones that yeah. categorized you guys as a band of misfits, and it's, it's kind of funny almost that he's only one yeah. of the only guys that isn't back this right. year. Right. So how have you kind of seen those young guys mix with the veterans? Yeah. How have they kind of gelled together? Yeah. And now as you guys get on the road, they get into hotel rooms for yeah. the first time. You're playing against guys not wearing the same jerseys as you. Yeah. Where do you guys see, or where do you see this team gelling moving forward? Well, it, it does help a ton having essentially every every position player return, in in that part is big. You, at the same time, too, now it's not to be redundant, but as you get those multiple classes in a row, mm -hmm. these guys have known each other, right? So, Tyler Cerny knows Josh Pine because they're both Indiana kids, have been committed to Indiana for three, four years. So you have some of that relationship beforehand when they get in, and so those guys are able to gel and move forward. Um, and and in in the day to day operation is able to move more smoothly because we have some basic understanding of each other. You know, some of the transfers, <clears throat> that, that part is always the more challenging part is mm -hmm. how do you get those guys in and acclimated. But I think going back to the recruiting process, I'm very, very adamant about how we recruit. And I, 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 always, tell, I always joke with the coaches, you, you only got one head. You, you can have five hats. You can only wear one, right? Mm -hmm. The stuff doesn't matter. It's the people. It's the people that matter. It's what they do and how they interact with. So let's make sure that when we sell, we sell ourselves, we sell our relationships, and we sell player development. Because you're going to attract kids that are like-minded. And when you attract like-minded people, then they gel. They may, like, they, may, they may like different music, but they have similar goals and aspirations and desires. 
So those guys gel really quickly. I would say it's the it's the tightest group that we've had in Indiana. It's the, and I know that's cliche to say, um, because b- before the the craziness starts, everyone gets along great, right? Mm-hmm. Before the first lineup's posted, and <laughs> everyone everyone loves everybody. But I do feel really good about the group from an emotional standpoint. They get along well, but I think it's because they're recruited with the same intent, mm-hmm. and so you have similar you have similar people that want to be together because they have the same desires. And then you have the guys that have been coming up for the last three or four years. They knew each other kind of coming into it, so that helps a bunch. Um, and I, I think a disciplined uh, program has disciplined processes, and, and it's very straightforward. It's easy to understand. And when you have a simple, disciplined, but difficult process to go through on a day-to-day basis, um, it, it, it doesn't leave uh, open-endedness or ambiguity or confusion or emotionalness because Everyone knows what they need to do, what the expectations are, and how you go about it. Um, and, and I think that leads to, to, to um, a, a better emotional state for the players, and, and they get along better when they're like that. And when you guys are building the program forward and you're out recruiting on the trail, that's a, that's a, that's a tedious process, and yeah. you can only do so much. You've right. got a great right. staff, and, and yeah. I think that's one thing that, that really sticks out to me is that when you talk to the players, everybody mentions the assistant coaches yeah. just as much as, yeah. as they mention you. Yeah. What is it about your staff that, that separates them in that, yeah. in that facet? And then yeah. also with the NCAA adding the mm-hmm. rule to where now volunteer coaches can be a part of the paid yeah. staff, yeah. what does that do moving forward for you guys? Yeah, uh, I think when you're hiring a staff, I, I think the, the, the critical component is do you, would you trust this person with the players away from you, mm-hmm. right, when things aren't going well? So a guy doesn't throw well. How is so-and-so going to react with the player away from you in, in you know, kind of in the recess of the locker room? When, you know, when the assistant coach gets a call at 10 o'clock at night from, you know, so-and-so is in trouble, how are they going to respond in those situations? Mm-hmm. If you look at it from that standpoint, are they good people? who have high character, high integrity, morality, who care about the kids and care about the growth of the people. Then I, then I think everything else works off of that. We, we can all learn baseball, we can all adjust, but if we don't have, if our, if our intentions aren't in the right place, if it's not about the kids and it's not about their experience, and it's not about being a great coach, if it's about being famous or making money or your recruiting rankings or whatever it is, then all of, everything else gets lost. We have to have our priorities in the right place. And the thing that we have as, as a coaching staff is you have coaches that truly care about the kids and their development and their experience. And then we can learn everything else. But if you don't have that, if you don't have that character, then, then everything falls short. Because it's never about the kids, it's always about the, the coach. And you see it all the time. Selfish, uh, selfish coaches who are more worried about themselves than about the program and the kids. And so we have really smart coaches that care about the kids. And so that's um, as a co- as a head coach, you just you can turn it over. So the kids, they don't need me all the time mm-hmm. because they have a wonderful hitting coach, they have a wonderful pitching coach, they have a wonderful infield coach. They don't need me there all the time. So I can go and be a part of everything a little bit. I don't have to do one thing all the time. And so hopefully, that's where that part comes from. When the players are talking about the assistant coaches so much, is because they're working with them day to day, and they know that the coaches care about them. And I don't have to micromanage. I don't have to overstep my boundaries. I can just go be a part of the day-to-day operation. And yes, the 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 third assistant is a huge deal for college baseball. And and I feel really good about things here at Indiana with Coach Rutherford. Um, but I think as much as anything is, you know, we we've talked about for years allowing the third assistant um, to be able to be compensated in some way, shape, or form, however the universities decide to do that, mm-hmm. for the sake of the coach. And that's kind of gotten some pushback, right? Budgets and all those different things. And my my argument has been this is the this is the the biggest day for student athletes in the last 15 years of college baseball. Mm-hmm. Because when you make a decision to come to a place, you're coming to play for. I, I know you're coming to the school to get your education, but you're coming to play for the coaches. Those are the, that's the relationship. We are the front porch in many ways of the university, actively pursuing kids and bringing them in. And so they're they're coming to play for you. They're coming to have that experience with you as a coach. And then every other year, one fourth of the coaching staff turns over Mm -hmm. because they can't compensate the coach. He's always moving on. There's always turnover. And that relationship that's built with a coach and that's broken constantly is hard. That's a really hard thing. You know, we've had a couple volunteer coaches 
uh, who have moved on in the past few years. And that when that conversation, they come in, they talk to the team, and, and they're crying, and the team's crying, and watching that heartbreaking moment with the guy they've spent so much time with, um, that's really hard. And I know that coaches move, and I get that. But what this does is it, it at least allows some stability within programs. And so now you can have a guy that can be in that job for three or four or five years. Uh, and, and again, the coaches move. I get that. Players move. I get that. But if you can have a guy for three to five years, you have a really solid run. You can get a, you can get a guy through his whole class. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a really good thing for the student athletes to have the, that relationship. But also, it, they can have more time with the coach because now the coach isn't always running all over the place to do camps. He's not doing lessons all hours of the day and all hours of the night. Mm -hmm. It's just a huge deal for why the kids came to school. They came for the experience, they came for the relationships, they came to be coached and developed. And so you took one of the coaches and you put him square in the middle of being able to do those things much more so, and which is super exciting for the kids. Coach, you've been so gracious with your time, so I've only got one more question for you. Yeah. Uh, Josh Pine at Media yeah. Day said that the goal for this group yeah. is to win a Big Ten championship. Yeah. When May comes around, mm -hmm. and if you guys are in that fight, and yeah. you guys are able to hoist that trophy at the end yeah. of the year, what will it be about this team that you'll look back on and be like, that's why we're, that's why we're in the position we're in? Hmm. That is an awesome question. <laughs> Score. It's not one that I take lightly. Um, you know, it's a, it, it's, a, it's a very gifted, it's a very physically talented team. Um, but I, and I know people say this, but it, there's teams that work hard and then there's teams that work hard. Mm -hmm. and, and this team works hard. It's, if, if you came in and watched these cats in the, these, these cats in the weight room, it is, it is a, a really physically strong team, but the mental athlete, the mental toughness, the attitude, there's a lot of confidence and it comes from the work that they put in. And so if we were to win a Big Ten championship, we were fortunate enough to do that, I would, I would say it would be because of the, of the work. It's just a, an insatiable appetite to work, an attitude of, of investment. I would say it would be the work and just, the, and that creates a toughness. You know, and, and I would say that's, that, that's what all good teams have, but not all good teams are willing to pay the price to do that. I don't have to beg, I don't have to plead, I don't, I, I don't have to, walk in with a new Rockney speech once a week. They just show up and they work and they work and they work and uh, it, it feels right. It feels right. Now whether we go and play great or we don't play great the first month, I don't know. Um, but I do know this, like it, it feels what it, it feels like what it's supposed to feel like when you have a good team. So I'll put it at that. Okay. Well, Coach, thank you so much for your time this morning, and good luck the rest of the way this thank year. Uh, thank you as well for watching. This has been a Hoosier Network exclusive one-on-one -on -one with Indiana baseball head coach Jeff Mercer. My name is Mason Williams.